you awake. A little bit earlier than normal. It's still dark outside. And, oh, what is that? There's a small, very well-turned-out Japanese lady sat at the end of your bed. What? It's, it's Marie Kondo. It's Marie Kondo, the author of the life-changing magic of tidying up. What was she doing? Oh, she's got your flaccid penis between her thumb and forefinger. She looks up at you. She looks at you dead in the eye and says, Does it spark joy? <laughs> oh, thank God. It was just a dream. I need me some coffee and memes. Steady job and a couple extra lobsters. That's all I want. If you're getting on, you're pushing 30, Slubby. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Oh. I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. The lobster HR has many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. Many of the top memes. The lobster HR has many of the top memes. And that is so true that it's almost unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen across the flat earth, welcome to Threshold.fm. Welcome to Coffee and Memes. Oof! All out into the stratosphere, all into the matrix, into this crazy mixed up reality that I don't understand. And the more I trawl through this madness, the less I understand, quite honestly. I wish I'd remained blissfully ignorant. Roughly, I think, about peaked about age seven. There was some sort of wonderment, but I didn't quite have the cognitive ability to understand things. So that is where I would take things. If I could go back, if I could get my hands on one of those DeLoreans or something to that effect, go back to age seven. Well, no, you can't go back to being... That's not how the DeLorean works, is it? That's, that's not how a flux capacitor works. Lobsters. You just Then you, you would go back in time and I would be my seven-year-old self. I mean, I'd kick his fucking ass. Easy. Seven-year-old me. He wouldn't stand a chance. Oof! To take his face off. Christ. Oh, dearie me. That little bastard. I hate him. No, he's all right. He's fine. Look, um, got a few new bits in the bank. He's got like a permit for a pit, big pit, and just dug a big pit. Elon Musk, he's digging a big pit. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. Yeah, you're damn right, Paris. She's the best DJ in the world. She's the highest paid DJ in the world. Uh, therefore, she must be the best because, uh, you know, the markets don't lie. You know, just let the markets decide. That's what they say, isn't it? That's what they say. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. Yeah, you're damn right. Look, we've got a load of gubbins going on in here today. Uh, models spared jail for importing £8,000 worth of python skin. Elon Musk asked to build a $10 billion Hadron Collider. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't build? He's got like a permit for a pit. Yeah. Armed police storm inmates' house to save a very hungry gerbil. Uh, of course, Digger Man, Digger Man, not paid 600 quid in wages, destroys an entire travel lodge. <laughs> he's out of control. Yeah, he's, um... Get your act together. Probably. What's on that one? Lobsters. All right, makes sense. Um, a woman on this morning says she's changed race with injections. Uh, we all know her. Nun with duffel bag drops severed goat head on pavement, um, and, yeah, no, that's about, oh, someone escapes on a milk float, that's fine, probably going to turn off Skype to stop uh, the interruptions there. How are you all? What's going on in the world? What's going on in lobster land? Where are you? What did you have for your breakfast? Does breakfast still mean breakfast? What happens with a no-deal breakfast? You know, what is a no-deal breakfast? Is that just a... Well, the breakfast of champions typically has been a paracetamol and a cigarette and an espresso. But a no-deal breakfast, is that <sighs> Greg's vegan sausage roll? I don't know. Maybe get in touch, answers on a postcard, usual address. Till then, get some fine-ass shoe throwers in this uh, sack of shoe throwers I've got. Special sack, so I'll carry my, carry my shoe throwers. That fucking noise is back again. Piece of shit. Um, got this um, new scientific bit, Cyborg VIP. It's worth playing, I think. Mm, moody intro. It's got like a 
Perfect for a pit. Ah, no meal breakfast. Thanks, Rob. Intermittent fasting. Yep, yeah, makes sense. Very popular these days, the no meal breakfast. <laughs> Yes, indeed, Cyborg VIP, Scientific and B-Motion. That one's literally fine. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets, people just go nuts. Yeah, man, that's on Viper, man. That's pretty cool, man. Hey, man, Nick Clegg here. Yeah, that new Cyborg VIP bit's an absolute riot, man. Uh, pass the doobie, man. You've had it for ages. Come on, Zuckerberg. Pass the peng. Oh, uh, what is Facebook? I don't even really... I still don't quite get it, but I'm looking forward to my new job. Anyway, bye. Yeah, all right, thanks for that. Um, scientific and or uh, B-motion. Right, keyboard warrior to pay 100 grand for falsely accusing woman of kicking her dog. Um, now, I mean, there was a very famous accusation of kicking uh, a person's dog. I don't know if anyone remembers. It was sort of one of the first, I don't know, wasn't it? It was pre-YouTube. There was the whole you kicked my dog. Uh, prank phone call. Uh, Indian dude. Uh, I'm not going to do the accent. That's a 
a dis- disaster waiting to happen, but I'm sure everyone will remember it. it may, anyone over 30 should remember that. Very early days internet, sent around by email. Uh, it, yeah, anyway. Uh, a keyboard warrior who has been forced to pay uh, 100 grand in legal costs after falsely accusing an animal lover of kicking her dog. Uh, Samantha Walker of Cardinal Close, Sunderland, uh, shout out Sunderland each and every, was a complete stranger to dog owner Kim Suttle, uh, 54, when she furiously accused her of beating her Mastiff cross. (laughs) 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 Have you ever... (laughs) Is there like a Twitter account of like accidental euphemisms or something like accidental wanking euphemisms? But the idea of beating one's massive cross definitely, I think, has connotations beyond uh, animal abuse. Walker filmed the interaction and later uploaded it to a vigilante Facebook group, which aimed at exposing alleged animal abusers. Care home manager, uh, Ms. Suttle, uh, then received a torrent of vicious abuse online which led to threats of violence. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, that, that, is, um, that is what will happen if uh, you are accused of animal abuse online. Uh, the dog owner, who regularly donates to animal charities, was even forced to leave her job after receiving a telephone death threat at her place of work. Fucking hell. That's a bit tart, isn't it? She was also turned away by her hairdresser. <laughs> it was told she would not cut the hair of an animal abuser. Uh, Mrs. Suttle... Um, Subtle sued Walker for libel and harassment after taking steps to uncover her identity. It's a weird thing to do, isn't it? Of um, accusing someone of kicking your dog when they didn't. Catherine uh, Evans, QC, for Ms. Subtle, told the London High Court the claims arise from a vicious online hate campaign instigated and continued by Ms. Walker against Ms. Subtle. It went viral on Facebook had a lasting harmful effect on her, led to threats of violence, even a death threat against her, and ultimately led to her having to resign her job. Uh, At the heart of the campaign was a false allegation that Mrs. Suttle had physically abused her dog. Um, You know, she'd been been, uh, beating the Mastiff Cross, if you know what I mean. Um, (laughs) And uh, claiming that Mrs. Suttle had physically abused her dog or caused it unnecessary suffering and that she was accordingly a cruel and appalling person. It's appalling. Uh, She continued, The allegation of dog beating was completely untrue. Later that same day, uh, Mrs. Suttle became aware that the allegation against her of dog beating, along with the recording of the confrontation in which she was clearly visible, had been uploaded uh, to a Facebook group page, apparently directed at exposing animal cruelty. She has, at all material times, kept pet dogs and been passionate about animals and donated money to animal welfare charities. She has a record of holding highly responsible jobs in the public sector. It follows that it is imperative that she is seen as having integrity and being caring towards those in her charge. Walker is ordered to pay Mrs. Suttle 55 grand in damages. Woo-hoo! And also faces a lawyer bill of around another 50 grand. Where are you going to pull that? Are you going to pull that out of your Mastiff Cross's ass? No chance. Uh, describing the case as a serious and nasty case of online harassment. But why? Why did she do it? What has happened? There was some sort of altercation, and um, the the uh, so she feels sort of hard done by the altercation, and so has decided to basically lie and say that this woman, that dog, looks like it would tear your face off if you kicked it. I don't believe for a second that. Uh, uh, he said it's usually very easy to unmask those behind anonymous blogs and posts. Um, they are they are then liable for the consequences of what they have done. I feel like uh, there should be, you know, I'm a freedom of speech guy, but if you accuse someone of doing something online or being something online and you cannot prove it, I think there should be some sort of consequences. Like you can't go around, you shouldn't be allowed to go around calling people Nazis if they're not Nazis. I mean, you know, if someone's an armband wearing Zig Heiling Nazi, Sure. They probably don't mind being called a Nazi, though. They actually are one. They're like, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Like, oh, shit, I need a new insult. Um, but, you know, if you were to insinuate that someone was and they were not, uh, I don't know, I feel like there should be, you know, some sort of... I don't know, man. Hey, look, it's uh, it's not my job to decide these things. It's just my job to argue about them online and waste my fucking days. No, no more. Can't be asked with that. Forget it. Not bothered. 
Uh, woman spends. Oh fuck off! I do, I accept. I, yes, yes, yes. Woman spends most of two hundred and twenty grand inheritance on drugs and says, "Why not?" It's, I think it's a it's a sort of fair fair point, isn't it? Uh, this is this, this is the problem with like having. So this is on sick chirps, right? And of course they get about two paragraphs of nonsense preamble to pad out the story. Basically, there's a video. Let's see. Let's come on. No? Oh, that's the wrong one, sorry. Yeah? No? Gonna do it? Go on, put the sound on. This is pathetic. Get your act together, sick chap. Get your act together. <sighs> do you get that much money? Oh, that's... Not every day you get that much money. They say money doesn't buy happiness. And that's certainly the case for Brody Bond. Her $220,000 inheritance bought her a world of pain. Oh. Destroyed my life. She used the vast majority of the money to buy drugs. So out of that money, probably $150,000 went to ice in Ooh. less than a year. You never know what could go with that. <laughs> she shopped up a storm too. Where were you shopping? Um, all the big clothes shops, Supray, JJ's, Best and Less, Kmart. Then there were the big ticket purchases. And I bought a car. What happened to that car though? I crushed it. Well, that's the end of that video. Great, nice one, guys. That's very uh, useful, informative. I feel like I've been had a little bit by this headline. There's not even the quote of her saying, why not? I should look into these things before um, darkening your doors uh, with them, really. I apologise. I wholeheartedly hold my hands up and apologise. I'm so sorry. You know, it was a bad time in my life, but that's not, a, um, that's not an excuse. And I will be making... I'll be making up for my uh, mistakes and looking to really do some deep soul searching and I will be donating a large uh, portion of the money, uh, the, the millions of dollars that I make uh, from Coffee and Memes to Cats Protection. I think that is a reasonable uh, thing to do. Right, look, what else we got? What we got in terms of shoe throwers? Um, probably have another... Uh, do, 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 do. All right, look, we've played pretty much every Rido track off this Rido and the gang. I think this is the one with Jade. It's called Maze. Nice bit of gear. I mean, they're all nice bits of gear, aren't they? It's not going to leave a sort of... Uh, it's not going to leave you out in the cold, right, OEP, is it? It's like a hard, warm boner just nudging into your back, just warming your core, <laughs> just keeping you, keeping you well heated through the night. Full of twists and dead ends, a vast labyrinth of pathways and corridors, a hundred miles long, a thousand miles wide. All you have to do is find your way through. Can you see the maze? It's twists and turns. real high level news that last story as someone has described it in the chat person had money spends it
yeah, that's Maze by Rido and Jade, I believe. By Rido and the ghost of Jade Goody. All right, come on, let's get into the important news. Digger Driver destroys brand new Travelodge Hotel because he's owed 600 quid in unpaid wages. Get your act together. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. This shocking footage shows the moment a builder smashed up a Travelodge Hotel uh, over an apparent row about his wages. It's been claimed that the angry worker was owed 600 notes and he hadn't been paid. Uh, before the incident, which caused thousands of pounds worth of damage to the newly built hotel in Liverpool. Uh, workers watched on as the orange digger mowed through the hotel's entrance shortly before 3pm yesterday. As the digger is driven up the steps, it tears through the front door. Glass doors and windows can be seen to shatter as part of the framework collapses. <laughs> Ah, it's broken Britain. Ah, this is what's going to be happening post-Brexit. Travel lodges will be destroyed by disgruntled workers because no one's got any cash to pay anyone. Ah, stuff's going to be on fire. Hordes of marauding vegans in the street. Desperate for the last vegan sausage roll. Ah, fire and brimstone. The second coming of Christ comes back. He says, fuck this, I'm out of here. It's a nightmare. I'm going back upstairs. Right. Um, one person can be overheard shouting, That's what, Harry, that's what happens when you do up here, you wages, mate. A source told the son, Nobody could believe their eyes. The man just went crazy. Everyone said he had an issue over his pain. He was owed 600 notes. Uh, but even if that's true, to smash up a building is just beyond belief. Uh, the video was posted on Twitter and it has since racked up 4,000 retweets and won uh, 11,000 likes. Many people have been supporting the allegedly unpaid builder. One saying, uh, and it's right as well, mate. All the larger contractors uh, are at it, along with the developers who constantly string smaller subbies along before paying them. Uh, but they do get paid. Is that what you're saying there? The whole system needs to change with fines being introduced for the late payments. In a statement, Merseyside Police say, said, we are appealing for information after damage was caused to a hotel under construction. I mean, how much more information do you need? There's clear video of it all happening. That's like the dude in the digger smashing up the travel lodge. It's a pretty open and shut case, really. I mean, I don't think you... You don't need to put Topolsky, the New York renegade cop, on it. Hey, Topolsky, you better go and find out this crazy digger, motherfucker. I'll put a bullet between his eyes. No, 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 just arrest him and bring him in. I'll tear him limb from limb. Topolsky, you're out of control. You're only two weeks out of the academy. I'll have your badge. You'll have nothing. I'm going to take his genitals. I'm going to squeeze their blood. I'm going to squeeze the pee stored in the balls all over my face face as I dance around, shirtless, <laughs> summoning Beelzebub. <laughs> Topolsky, I, I think you need to see the psych. Um, I, I have deep concerns for you, Topolsky. <laughs> um, I just walk in. Yeah, it's got like a permit for a pit. Uh, in a, uh, a report was received shortly after 3pm that the digger was being driven into the entr entrance of a travel lodge building. The driver then left the vehicle and made off on foot. <laughs> He's gone on the lamb. Uh, one man experienced an eye irritation due to exposure to diesel and was treated at the scene by Northwest Ambulance Services. It is not believed anyone else was injured in the incident. <laughs> <laughs> this, this motherfucker's out there damaging a hotel, causing minor eye irritation. <laughs> he is absolutely out of control. Uh, Mail Online reported that Travel Lodge declined to comment, but the spokesperson for Triton Construction... Uh, the main constructor on site said their understanding was that the labourer who works with another groundwork construction uh, company couldn't find his boss, so it was due to give him his wages. Uh, they told the publication, at approximately three o'clock, the labourer took it upon himself to drive a small mini excavator through the entrance screen of the hotel, subsequently caused damages uh, to finishes with the reception. Fortunately, uh, they appear to be no, there appears to be no structural damage, so repairs can be undertaken relatively quickly. Well, there's every cloud, I guess. Uh, thanks for that, Rebecca uh, Shepherd of the Loud Bible. Uh, your first-class BA in journalism that you got from the University of Central Lancashire has not been wasted. Right, what have we got? Uh, Ugandan DJ killed for playing boring music. I cannot confirm the authenticity of this story. I'm just putting that out, putting that out there. A disc jockey has been killed by revelers for playing boring music. Uh, what was he playing? Minimal techno? 
Jerry Ockerworth, a part-time disc jockey and student at Porombo Secondary School in Uganda, was murdered by the mob for failing to play their favourite songs. You know what, man? I've had a few shows in Essex that haven't been far off that. I played at this place that was a... I mean, it was like a Weatherspoons. I'm pretty sure it was a Weatherspoons, but they also had a licence in there to play music, and it was sort of like a club as well. When I got there, the DJ on before... I've probably told this story before, but the DJ on before was playing R. Kelly Ignition, and it was going off. And I was there to play very noisy dubstep, and I thought, this is a bad sign. Uh, I got on. Uh, they were pretty disgruntled by the first uh, the first dubstep record. There were then shouts to play Beyonce, Rihanna, usual stuff. Uh, some some lasses collared me, demanding a birthday shout out for their friend. Uh, I informed that they informed them that there was no microphone. I didn't really understand that such a thing could be possible. They're like, no, give us a birthday, give a birthday shout out for my friend. I said, there's no there's no microphone. I mean, I guess I could turn the music down and just shout. That's a bit weird though. They're like, yeah, yeah, but it's her birthday. Yeah, but there's no microphone. Yeah, but it's her birthday. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it in a minute. And uh, eventually, after a couple more times of saying, yeah, yeah, in a minute, they lost interest. Anyway, about five or six songs later, people were pretty roused off and the promoter came and just put my fee in my back pocket and told me to leave immediately before there was trouble. There would have been trouble. That much I'm sure of. Um, Oki Worth was killed on Wednesday in a disco hall in Nebi District, northern Uganda. Nebi resident district commissioner William Bob uh, blamed the establishment's management for failing to protect the budding DJ from the irate crowd. I mean, just, is this the sort of thing that's just expected there? Like, did DJs... God, is, is, it, is DJing a dangerous job in, in Uganda? Is this even real? I don't know. Uh, all disco halls in sub-countries must be closed because they are causing insecurity and redundancy among the youth. Right. Um, As the head of the security in the district, I will no longer allow any disco operators to conduct their business in the sub-county, and anybody who defies the directive will be prosecuted. However, this is not an, uh, this is not an isolated case. In 2014, uh, three Zimbabwean men were charged with the murder of assaulting a DJ on Independence Day for playing boring music. And DJs need to... Uh, I mean, I um, don't want a victim blame here, but like, DJs need to up their game. If your music's so boring, people kill you. Something's gone wrong, hasn't it? Elson uh, Trivi Valley, 22, suffered severe head injuries after he was hit with a chair and a bottle in the ensuing fight. Man, that's rough. Like, you know, I know I'm taking a piss and everything because it seems pretty ridiculous, but it's not cool, really, is it? Right, okay, so we'll just try and find some music that isn't boring so someone doesn't tear my door down and beat me to death. Uh, right, dub elements, that'd be fine. No issues there. I can't, I can't see there being any problems with this. It's called uh, Lyce, Lyson, 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 Lyce, Lyson, Lyce, Lyce, Head Lyce. It's called Head Lyce. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, that's a decent bit of gear, isn't it? Lyceon, I guess it's... Is that a name of a drug or a something? Uh, a chemical? Oh, Lyceon was a king of Arcadia. Right. Like this might have she throw the weight potential. Yeah, dub elements. Lyceon. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Come on, look, look. All right, let's just try pronunciation. Google. Come on, don't fail me. Come on, internet. All right, let's, let's let's see what he says. Is this going to be taking a piss out of me? Almost certainly. Oh, internet, you are so slow. Come on. Lycaon. Lycaon. Right, okay. Lycaon by Dubbo. Lycaon. All right. Christ, what is this? A child doing it? Mocking me? Fuck my old boots. Uh, anyway, look, into more important news. None with duffel bag drops seven goat head on pavement outside of Weatherspoons. I mean, perhaps it was for their Valentine's dinner. It's got like a permit for a pit. Yep. Uh, revelers in Cheltenham reported uh, reportedly spotted a sickening sight in the town over the weekend as a severed goat's head was left on the pavement outside a popular pub. It's the pavement outside a popular pub. One shocked passerby of the popular pub walking along Bath Road in Cheltenham uh, witnessed the goat head lying on the pavement. I will say it's a rough sight, this goat's head. It's, uh, it's not just a straight up severed head. It's been skinned. Uh, they said it was about 10.30 Saturday night and the goat head was just on the path outside the Weatherspoon. Everyone was just acting like normal. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever been to a Weatherspoon, but that is the least of your worries in there. I mean, I've seen people that look basically looked like a severed goat head playing the fruit machines uh we did go past sunday morning and it was gone <laughs> okay good uh this disgusting image reveals the animal's head on the pavement but that is not the end of the unusual circumstance surrounding what happened the rest with the rest of the goat they added my friend also said that there was someone in a nun costume how do you look how do you know it was a costume could have been a nun if it's a legit nun it ain't a costume it's a uniform it's an outfit it's not a costume, is it? You know, if you're a nun and you get up in the morning, I don't know, five, do a bit of praying, you know, like, I'll just put my costume on. It's not an act. It's a way of life. Come on. Have some religious sensitivity. A spokesman for the, weather, for the Weatherspoons said, pub management at the Moon Underwater were aware of the incident, although it did not take place on the premises, but on the pavement outside and passers-by perused the pavement and there was all sorts of pompous prattle prattle. The identity of the culprit and motive are unknown. It'd be nice to speculate, though, wouldn't it? I would say that Weatherspoons are probably in league with the devil. It would make sense, wouldn't it? Don't you give me that fucking noise again. It would make sense that they're they've got some sort of some sort of pact with Beelzebub. So the severed goat head is probably a warning, I guess, that they've been rumbled. Some local nuns are onto them, basically, and they're gonna. They're going to use the power of um, Jebus, Raptor Jesus, and they're going to ride to the Weatherspoons soon atop uh, Raptor Jesus. And he'll go extinct for their sins. And that'll be that. Right, next, more Cheltenham news. This is from the Gloucester Live uh, newspaper, a fine source of uh, news stuff. 
A Fucking Thrill, How Teenager Described Robbing Chooksbury Milkman and Escaping on His Milk Float. The mil- a milkman was threatened with a commando-style knife during early morning incident. That makes it less fun, isn't it? I mean, if you just sort of like wait till the milkman goes to the door, drop milk off, and then nick his milk float, bit of a laugh. The commando knife kind of sours the deal, really, doesn't it? A milkman on his early morning round was robbed of his milk float by a drug-crazed teenager who threatened him with a commando knife. A court heard, yeah, the kid looks, uh, well, he looks like he likes to jump up. Uh, he looks um, a bit Tide Poddy. Um, very Tide Poddy, actually. He looks like he's on Tide Pods right now. He looks a bit bird boxy. Maybe he was doing the bird box challenge, and it would make a lot of sense. Look, let's get him up. Here he is, the little rascal. Oh, he's a bit of a rascal. God bless him. Hey, boys will be boys, right? <laughs> Come on. Okay, let's get uh, get back into it. Joshua Somerell, 19, of No Fixed Abode. Hello. Initially demanded a bottle of milk from Kingsley Wright when he saw him in Ash Road, Tewkesbury, 5am, August 22nd. Gloucester Crown Court was told on Thursday. But when Mr. Wright refused... Summerell produced a knife, which had a six-inch serrated blade. It's not what you need at 5 a.m. in the morning when you're just out doing the Lord's work delivering milk, is it? Come on, it's, it's honest work. That is, is milkman, honest work, isn't it? Mr. Wright fled on foot, and Summerell drove off at speed in the float. All right, don't over-egg the pudding. No one can drive at speed in a milk float, uh, said prosecutor Janie Wood. Oh, Janine Wood. My apologies, Janine. Summerall admitted robbing Mr. Wright and was jailed for 27 months. It's a really specific amount of time. Before the incident, Summerall has spent the night drinking and taking drugs, said Mrs. Wood. She alleged that, alleged that Summerall initially told Mr. Wright, Give me all your money! Uh, but the defence did not accept that. Ugh. Judge uh, Callum ruled, The effect on Mr. Wright was that he responded to the implicit, if not explicit, threat. I came to the conclusion that the implicit threat is as serious. What's that? If someone's wielding a knife at you, the implication is that they're going to stab you, whether or not they say they're going to stab you or not, I presume. I just walk in, play like the sickest sets. People just go nuts. I just walk in. All right, in. all right. Uh, Mr. Wright said that Summerell was about five to six feet away from him when he was confronted. And his victim statement says, I was shocked and scared. Uh, had I not run away, I would have come to harm. Did a fucking good job running away then, didn't you, mate? Fight or flight, leg it. After Mr. Wright fled, leaving the keys behind, Summerell jumped in and drove off, spinning the wheels as he did, the prosecutor said. He drove around a few streets uh, before continuing on with Mr. Wright's milk round and apparently did a thoroughly good job of it. No, he drove around a few streets before throwing the keys down a drain, <laughs> causing the owners Cotswold Dairy further expense. God, this kid is a menace. He's got all the hallmarks of little Jimmy Cartwright. You know, the freckle-faced boy with the gimpy leg off the estate? He set fire to David Guetta once and ran Arwan over in his car. Uh, He went to a woman's house on Ash Road. Mr. Wood said he told her that he had committed a robbery, taking a milk float. She looked on Facebook and saw a report of it and called the police about the matter. Because this all unfolded very quickly. His mother also called the police after he admitted to her that he had left the knife in the truck. That is schoolboy error. See, he's... He's got some learning to do, hasn't he, about these crimes? I guess you you don't get good at crimes from the first crimes that you do. You get better at crimes. The more crimes you do, you're supposed to get better at them. You're supposed to learn, aren't you? But, I mean, I don't really know the learning curve when it comes to crimes. It turns out I was pretty shit at crimes when I was a kid. Uh, his, uh, he was arrested on the 29th of August from his mother's home and a resist. Oh, and he resisted arrest. Bit of fun. In a police interview, he said, It was a fucking thrill, but I did not intend to do anything. I just wanted to threaten. That was my <laughs> that was my invitation to steal. Right. I didn't want to stab the man, just threaten him a bit. Just threaten the poor milkman out doing his round at five in the morning. Uh, a man going about his lawful business is confronted by someone high with a weapon, and understandably, he makes off. Uh, the barrister described his client as an extremely immature young man. This is a young man juiced up on Tide Pods, playing the Bird Box Challenge. Uh, this is a young man who took the decision which meant uh, he was living with his father from age 12 to 13 with a serious lack of boundaries. He was roaming free around Chooksbury, drinking and taking drugs. He remains reckless, immature, and at the time he was homeless. It was an act of wild, frightening stupidity on his part. Uh, yeah, well, I don't imagine that sort of normal, well-rounded people do that sort of thing, so presumably he's had his fair share of, more than his fair share of, 
rubbish times. Nevertheless, shouldn't be threatening milkmen with commando knives. I think we can all agree on that. Nor should we be stealing milk floats and throwing the keys down a drain while high on Tide Pods. Anyway, I digress. How about this? Uh, it is called Side Effects. Freak. Fr- the sp- freak NC, but spelt with a four. Uh, Handra. Side Effects. Freak NC, spelt with a four. Sam in the chat. Maze Britain. Yes, understand me. This would never happen under Corbyn. <laughs> as soon as he'd get into charge, just crime would just disappear. <laughs> I think that's how it works. Oh, it's pronounced frequency, apparently. Sorry, uh, freak NC. It's spelled with a four. Hey, Jesus, Cho Riders brought something up. Milkman are all... <laughs> Milkman honestly pumping your wife while you're at work. Maybe he deserved it. Chode Rider says, in the communist state, there shall be no crime. This is correct, because everyone would already be dead. (laughs) Tom Dilly says, make weed and mushrooms legal. Sorted. This is Handra, Side Effects, Frequency spelt with a 4, Remix.
Yeah, Handra, side effects, frequency, spelt with a four, remix. That's a nice bit of gear. What, is, uh, what label is that on? Absolutely no idea. Uh, good tune, though. Nice drums. Like it. Like it. Nice. Drake announces 2019 UK and European arena tour dates. Nah. No, he's um, he's actually going to present for holding up a milkman with a knife. <laughs> Imagine that. Anyway, woman on this morning says she changed race with injections. <sighs> right, buckle up. <sighs> fucking thing, man. Fucking noise again. Uh, a white woman who has had loads of melanin injections to darken her skin claims to have changed race, adding that any future children she might have will be born black. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, bless her. Well, sort of. Um, I, th- I, you do, I do almost feel a little bit bad mocking her, um, but that's not going to stop me. Uh, she, she, like, she's obviously not well, is she? Uh, that's, I'm afraid that's not how it works. Um, you can't, uh, yeah, like if you dye your hair ginger, you don't automatically have ginger babies. And if you have your skin darkened, I'm afraid your babies. And get born. That's not not not. Oh, not have it. Uh, uh, of course, a story like this could only have happened on ITV's This Morning. To say that Holly Willoughby and standing co-host John Barrowman uh, were shocked by these revelations is something of an understatement. Barrowman, who was out the night before slinging dick in, um, it's shagging ali- any aliens he could get his hands on. Captain Jack, you bad motherfucker. Uh, Martina Big, who is a white model from Germany, that's a model used really in the loosest sense of the term, said that she has spoken to doctors and they told her that any children conceived by her and her husband Michael, who has also had tanning injections, will be black. What? (laughs) All right, look, I I shall admit, I am not a medical professional. I'm not a doctor. I only have a GCSE C in science. Double science, though, so I've got two Cs in it. Double it up, that's probably a B, isn't it? I, you know, I I can't say definitively. I'm only going on common knowledge and common sense that it's not that these... What doctors are you going to see? <sighs> probably... Oh, my God. Um, that This is said, Ger- I don't know, Germany do lead the way in wacky medical stuff sometimes. They invented homeopathy. The um, German, di- I mean, uh, the more I tell you what, if you ever want to laugh riot, just have a look into the birth of homeopathy. My God. Anyway, she also spoke about how she spent time in Kenya to engage with tribal culture. Oh, God. Uh, she now identifies as a black woman following two years of melanin injections. Uh, Martina, who is also thought to have had the lo- thought to have the largest breasts in Europe. Cool. She's got it all going on. Following surgery, said, "My children will. My children. She has a really decent German accent. My children will be black. Uh, we are not having plans, but I am discussing with my doctor to see if my body is okay. Will I be able to breastfeed? What will the baby look like? I'm gonna. I will go out on a limb and say, I'll. It. What it will look like will definitely not be black. <sighs> Holly, always ready to start saying what she's thinking, responded." I am trying to think genetically how that is possible. If you give birth to a white child, will you somehow think that it's not connected to you? Uh, Martina hits straight back. No, it is a mix of Michael and me. Uh, I'm pretty sure it will be black or milk chocolate or a little bit light. It doesn't matter. Fucking Nora. (sighs) Right. Uh, It seems abundantly obvious that you shouldn't use terms like milk chocolate in 2019. That's before we get to the fact that her claims are somewhat controversial. I mean, yeah, that's probably quite far down the list of ridiculous things that she's said that sort of needs to be addressed. However, Martina and her husband genuinely appear to believe their story. They're both just mad. They're just, I mean, I, I don't particularly see them as a danger to anyone, but they just, I mean... Naturally, she was pressed about what qualifies her to be an expert on black culture. She replied, a lot of African-Americans don't know about African culture. Fucking hell. Yeah, she's... Once again, I'm not sure that is exactly a ringing endorsement of her views. After all, a lot of British people aren't experts on British history, but that doesn't preclude them from not being part of it. Doesn't preclude them from being part of it. Anyway, people are understandably a little upset by Martina's claims. One Twitter user said, Martina Big really annoys me. She just wants to be a black woman. She will never she will never be, regardless of her skin colour, it's just blackface. Um 
God. She, uh, oh, she spent a bit of time in Kenya and has been baptised with the new Swahili name. And she thinks she's the real deal. Oh, I hope she gets the help she needs. Um, just, yeah, I mean, what do you... Well, I mean, where do you... Uh, uh, it's got like a permit for a pit, big pit, and just dug a big pit. Yeah. Right, to play us out, my boy, Constrict. He's a good lad. This is called Never Lost. Joe says, take Schofield's tanning bed away, send Holly to the gulag, hang Piers Morgan. Always fun to wish death on people you don't agree with, isn't it? Saying hang Piers Morgan uh, is, I think you're actually committing a crime there. You're looking instigating violence against like other death threat, I think. Could be committing a crime there. Possible. Like a, 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 a,
This is Never Lost by Constrict. It's part of the Acceptance EP. It's out now. Lovely, lovely, lovely. All right, this is the end of the show. I will be back this evening with my boy, MCID. He'll be talking about the world, talking about life, talking about love. Uh, He'll be giving his top tips for romancing ladies. He'll be giving his uh, top recipes for um, vegan uh, brownies. And he will be defending uh, Jump Up as a political ideology. Nah, not true. We'd just be chatting about drum and bass, chatting about MCs, chatting about life, you know, love. Yeah, yeah, why not? Chatting about lobsters. Leaves me time to shout out the VIP list. A fine bunch of lobsters that are supporting us on Patreon. And therefore, get their names shouted out at the end of every show. If you want your name on this list, donate $10 a month or more. And I will read it out at the end of every show. Also, if there's some sort of item or thing or service that you would be happy to contribute cash towards that can be a threshold thing, that could be on the Patreon, if there's something particular that you want. You know, we are just, we're just about covering costs uh, for the station at the moment. But it would be great to have money to be able to upgrade equipment to take on a member of staff uh, part time and to be able to pay them. I don't want to be one of those cunts that asks people to work unpaid internships. It basically means you get people with rich parents and uh, it's not exactly equality of opportunity. So if there is something you would like, I was thinking maybe uh, maybe drum and bass samples. Could be a thing. There could be a rank and audio hookup. Like you know, let me know. This is uh, I'm you know, like I say, I'm I'm here for you all. The VIP list currently: Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Mosson, Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, oh, Michael Kaczynski. Uh, Kieran, I will get back to you. I did get your email. I did listen to your show. It's very good. Uh, Kieran R, oh, Michael Kaczynski, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bollard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbart, Mike Pye, Anthony. Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Rinder, Andrew Heischerbeck, John Finnison, BDR Crew, uh, Andrew Heischerbeck, Austin Grief Cooper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squivington, and Liam the Menace Underwood. Uh, Liam has changed his Facebook picture to a troll troll face, meme troll face, uh, driving a driving a ship. Will he get back into the lobster crew? Uh, group. Maybe I'll let him back in just to wind up Joe Waits. Who knows? <laughs> oh, great times. Right. I will see anyone who tunes in later. Later. Otherwise, I will see y'all at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for more of this coffee and more of these memes. Until then, do not let your memes be dreams. And do not take any guff off these swine. Don't let the bastards grind you down. You know, spend more time with your friends and family. Do some, make some good art, follow your dreams, your hopes, and ignore your fears. I love you all deeply, and I will see you later. Goodbye.